All right, welcome everyone to, <clears throat> excuse me, welcome everyone to part two of Hack Mobile. Um, today we'll be getting into Flutter and introducing what Flutter is and how to build uh, basic interfaces with Flutter. Um, the slides are here, acmural.com slash Flutter2. Um, this is the second Hack Mobile workshop, but it's the first Flutter workshop. Again, kind of confusing. <coughs> I apologize for that, but um, it is what it is. All right, um, checking code is mobile fire. So just uh, check in at members.acmucsd.com uh, and get your points, which are currently useless, but hopefully they'll, they'll be useful soon, right? Yes. Yes, thank you, soon. All right, so we'll get started here. Um, Things to install. So I made a, an announcement in some of the discords, if you might have seen. Um, there are some things you need to install. So first of all, Flutter SDK. And if you want to build for Android, um, then you install Android Studio. If you have a Mac and you want to build for iOS, then you install Xcode. Um, I'm going to warn you, these are very big installs, <coughs> which is why I recommended you installed them beforehand. Uh, I think Flutter is like 700 megabytes. Uh, so it's almost a gigabyte. And I know Xcode is like 11 gigabytes. Um, so these are kind of big. So I don't really expect you to have them. If, yeah, Android Studio is, is a memory hog. I, I do agree. Um, and another thing is Android Studio, every install of Android I find is unique. Um, so if you run into issues there, it's very hard for me to help you just because of the way things are. So it's not ideal. But this is just kind of, you know, what we have to expect when we're dealing with mobile development. Um, it's okay if you don't have these installed. Um, I'll try my best to sort of help you follow along. Um, and also, <laughs> even if you don't have uh, Android or Xcode, uh, you can develop Flutter for web now. So that that's an option. All right. Uh, and then here are some optional but recommended installations. So I'll be using VS Code as a text editor for this uh, workshop and any future workshops. I find that VS Code is very nice, uh, specifically for Flutter, because of the Flutter extensions for VS Code. So there's the Flutter, the base Flutter extension that helps you with debugging and writing code. And then there's also awesome Flutter snippets. Um, and this lets you <coughs> write code much faster um, using basic uh, templates and snippets. It's like shorthand for uh, common patterns that you'll see. So uh, feel free to use any other text editor. So if you, if you want to use Android Studio or Xcode or Vim even, um, then feel free to do so. It's not required. But I think this is a very uh, big help and it's actually one of the reasons why I enjoy using Flutter. <clears throat> so yeah. Um, so today's agenda will be going over uh, an intro to Flutter and why I think it's so good. Uh, we'll be setting stuff up, making sure everything runs properly. Um, there's a nice example app that Flutter comes with that'll, you know, help you test if everything works. Uh, and then we'll be going into stateless widgets, uh, so building your first widget and writing UIs and then stateful widgets um, to integrate application state into your app. Uh, if you don't know what these words mean, um, it's okay. I'll, I'll explain everything later. So what is Flutter? Um, Flutter is a mobile and web UI framework that uses the Dart language. So in the last workshop, we covered uh, what Dart is. It's an object-oriented programming language very similar to Java, if you're familiar with that. It also takes some inspiration from JavaScript. Um, so it kind of incorporates all these different technologies and all these nice things about each language into one you know, very interesting and different language. Uh, it's a relatively new framework, but has some advantages over the other mobile technologies. Uh, and by relatively, relatively new, I think the main issue with that is that um, lack of support is a thing, right? Um, like not all these libraries have had time to really get fleshed out as much as the other ecosystems. 
but I think this is still a very promising um, framework to use. <coughs> okay, so why Flutter? Um, so the issues with the other platforms, I kind of talked about this in my React Native workshop. Um, if you were there, I think, was it last quarter or a few weeks ago? I don't remember. Um, but uh, yeah, so Android can be very difficult, requires in-depth Java and Kotlin experience. Uh, and uh, as someone else pointed out earlier, it's a memory hog as well, right? Um, if you've ever taken CSE 110 with Griswold, um, you'll know like how painful it can be. Uh, writing UIs with Android is not super intuitive. And the way things work, I just don't really like how things work. Um, I think, yeah, it's just, it's just really strange. Um, for iOS, that requires a Mac, which is expensive, right? That's already a very high barrier of entry. Uh, you know, a lot of people can't afford Macs. A lot of people can't access a Mac. So <laughs> that's really the main drawback there. Um, and lastly, React Native. I think this is sort of um, a matter of preference. It's, it's still, it's a very solid technology, but um, I just don't like CSS. <coughs> and React Native has a lot of it. You know, being based on React and web development concepts. So I, I just don't like it. Um, if you like CSS, then maybe React Native is for you. But the one thing that is important for Flutter is that you could develop cross-platform apps with one code base. So that's um, writing one project for uh, both iOS and Android, right? So let's say you're like a, you know, you're, you're a you know, one person or a startup uh, trying to write, you know, a, a mobile application <coughs> and you want to release for both platforms to reach uh, as many users as possible, right? Uh, if you go with Android or iOS, the downside is that you're essentially writing two separate apps. You're maintaining two separate code bases, two separate projects and maintaining the feature parity between them and right? making sure everything works the same and making sure there's no bugs that are different in each one um, is very difficult. If you're a big company, um, you know, that might be kind of easy, right? You might have teams for iOS and teams for Android that are working, you know, full time on each app. But if you're one person uh, working on your personal project or a startup with limited resources, you know, it's very difficult to maintain two, essentially two separate projects. So Flutter is sort of aims to solve that. React Native also kind of does that um, with keeping things mostly in one code base. Um, there are some exceptions, but for the most part, you'll be developing in one code base. <coughs> so let's get started creating our first app. Um, so if you don't have Flutter installed, uh, that's fine. You could just follow along, just watch me code. I'll be sort of writing everything out with you. Um, and if you do, then feel free to uh, follow along and type in the commands and edit the files with me uh, and you can see it work. So first of all, let's make sure we have everything installed properly. So the flutter doctor command, this is um, kind of magical. Uh, let me see, do I have terminal open? Okay, I'll open the terminal. So if we run flutter doctor here, <coughs> I'd take a while, but it basically tells you everything that you have installed and if it's installed properly. So if you see like check boxes on everything, this lets you know, okay, you have Flutter installed properly. Uh, I also have Android installed and Xcode. Um, so these are installed properly. Um, and for your editors, right, VS Code, Android Studio. Um, so it just lets you know what's wrong. And if something is wrong, it'll tell you. They're like, oh, you're missing Android, you're missing VS Code or something. <coughs> so yeah, uh, very useful command. This is kind of the first thing you should consult if you run into any issues with building or compiling Flutter. <coughs> All right, so um, let's just create the example app. So this is an app that comes pre-packaged with Flutter. So we're gonna run the Flutter create command uh, and then go into the newly directory and just run it, newly created directory and run it. So I'm gonna go into my uh, dev directory and then I, I'm going to, it's going to do a bunch of things. Then we're going to CD into Hello World and we'll open it in VS Code. <clears throat> right. 
so this is kind of the project structure. So let's, um, next step is we're gonna run the project. Uh, so you can use the command line to do this if you want uh, by typing in flutter run. But we're not gonna do that in VS code because um, if you have the flutter extension, you can run and debug flutter very easily. So just go into here, run and debug, um, dart and flutter. <coughs> Looks like it's opening in Chrome. Um, let's see. So it's opening in Chrome because that's the device device that we have um, because you can develop Flutter for web. So this is the sort of basic app um, that we'll get. Uh, and it basically has a counter just to keep track of how many times you press a button. Right? Extremely basic, but it, it'll teach you a lot of things. So this is if you don't have a mobile SDK installed. So if you don't have Android or Xcode, then you'll get this. Uh, let's open up an iOS simulator here. File simulator. And I'm going to full screen this just so it would look a little better. This is why I like Mac. You could arrange these layouts and stuff. Uh, anyway, let's run this. As you can see now, it's gonna be running on the iOS emulator that we have. And we should get the same app after it's done building. All right, so here we are. Um, again, this does the same thing. So now let's get back to the slides. So troubleshooting, hopefully you're able to get this to run if you're following along. Um, if not, then first of all, run Flutter Doctor, see if anything is missing. That's the first thing you should always check. Uh, secondly, check if your device is properly connected. I believe the command for that is Flutter devices. I, I don't quite remember. But yeah, this, okay, yeah, this lists every device you have connected. So in this case, we have an iPhone emulator here and Chrome connected. Um, and then make sure your emulator is running if you have uh, an emulator. If not, if you're just using your phone, just make sure it's properly connected. Um, yeah. <coughs> Debugging these things can be kind of annoying, um, but getting this to work is sort of the first step Yeah, feel free to uh, speak up with any questions in the chat if you have any. Um, so yeah, let's go over the project structure now. So you notice all these folders in this project, you know, what is all this, right? So the lib folder here, this is the main folder containing your app code. Um, so you look in here, there's a main.dart file. This is what, um, this is the code you're gonna be writing essentially, the code you'll be working on. Um, and this is ultimately what gets compiled into the app. Uh, then test uh, for writing widget tests, UI tests, unit tests. Um, so this is if you're developing for like say, um, you know, more professional settings where you want uh, to make sure everything works. <coughs> um, if you're writing unit tests uh, or tests for separate, you know, individual widgets or integration tests for entire, you know, UI flows or whatever. Uh, we won't be going over tests um, in this workshop. Uh, yeah, and then next up we have the iOS, Android, and web folders. So this is um, 
platform specific code. So uh, there's some certain like libraries in Flutter that might require you to go in here and modify stuff. Uh, in part four, I'll be going over Firebase uh, and that will require us to go in here and edit some stuff right in each one of these. <coughs> so this is the exceptions I talked about earlier. Um, but for now, we don't need to worry about these. Uh, we'll just be looking at the lib folder pretty much. So what is going on here, right? We have all this code that we're seeing in the main um, main dot Dart, right? You might be kind of overwhelmed. Um, if you're not familiar with Dart, that's okay. I'll try to explain everything as we go. Uh, so I've removed all the comments here, or most of the comments, um, just so I could, you know, have this all fit in one slide. So the main function here, this is what gets called when the app starts, right? This is just like main in, you know, Java or C++ or C, uh, and it calls this run app. <coughs> it calls run app on the my app widget. And that essentially tells us, okay, we want the my app widget to be the root of our application. Right, widgets are essentially forming a tree in our application. This is the root node. Right, so uh, we keep the top level widget stateless. This is not a requirement, but this is um, just what we have now. Stateless widget just means that we're not keeping track of any variables, at least in this widget. There might be states underneath it, but in this widget alone, we're not keeping track of any state. <coughs> I'll go into what state and stateless widget stateless widgets are later. Um, yeah, and then this is the build function here that is actually what your UI code goes in. Um, so stateless widget has a build function that we essentially override. Uh, and it basically just returns uh, another widget that we want to display. So in this case, the material app widget is sort of like a wrapper that wraps around the entire app. Uh, and then we specifically give it the um, you know, home as the my homepage widget and uh, this theme data and this title. <coughs> right, uh, so next up, I think this is one of the best features of Flutter is hot reloading. So let's change the theme of the app and save. So if we go into here, uh, we change from colors.blue to colors.green here in line 23 save, you notice instantly this changes. Um, so the app instantly changes to green because that's our new theme. Uh, but notice one interesting thing, right? It does not recompile the whole thing. It actually just updates widgets. Uh, it's, it updates the widget tree in a, in a sort of smart way. Uh, yeah, green, green is a cool color. Um, it's not a very creative color though. So, but notice how the state here did not um, it did not change, right? We, we, our counter is still at 13. So this is just an interesting, um, you know, quirk of Flutter. You can think of it as a quirk or a benefit or a feature, um, but it just updates the widget tree accordingly rather than recompiling the entire application, which I think is really nice for performance purposes, right? If you're making small changes, you know, trying to edit the spacing of some box, right? You don't want to be recompiling your entire app every single time. Um, and that's another issue with Android that, well, back when I used uh, Android, that was an issue. I don't know if they fixed it now, but having to recompile every time you make a change is kind of annoying. <laughs> and we can use different colors here. I think like, I really like amber, um, like this yellowish kind of color. Uh, you notice it updates. If we change the state, we change it back. Um, it'll update without changing the state. It keeps the state. So that's pretty interesting. <coughs> and I, this is just um, part of the VS code, um, be, the benefits of VS code. I think if you run it in terminal, you have to press another button to hot reload, uh, but VS code automatically does it for you, which is why I recommend it. All right. So if, you have, if you're using VS code, your app should automatically refresh. <coughs> So next up, uh, we'll be sort of deep diving into widgets. And these are essentially the building blocks of Flutter. So 
these are kind of inspired by components in React. So if you've done React before, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, everything in React is a component, right? The whole page is a component uh, that contains much smaller components, which might contain smaller components in themselves. Um, and this is just the basic building block of UI. <coughs> so all apps in Flutter are essentially just widget trees starting at the widget that we pass into the run app function. All right, so this is kind of an example of what the widget tree would look like. We have my app that contains a material app, which contains the home page. And inside of the home page, we have the scaffold for the UI. Um, and then, you know, the different components of the layout. All the way down until we have these very basic text, you know, column icon components. Um, yeah. So if you've done React before, this should be very familiar to you. Um, if not, then I think this is still a pretty intuitive way of building interfaces, right, with widgets. <coughs> uh, and they come in two main types, stateless and stateful. We'll get into what that is later on. Um, so here's some basic widgets. So you have text, right, to display and style text, as kind of obvious. Uh, row and column. So this creates rows and columns of other widgets. So if you want to have a bunch of widgets lined side by side or a bunch of widgets top to bottom, that's what it's for. Um, and you can nest them within each other, right? You can have a row with multiple columns and then widgets between them. You can nest them however you want to create very interesting layouts. Uh, this is very similar to Flexbox and CSS. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, Flexbox and CSS, if you've ever done that before, uh, the way you lay out rows and columns of things, that's just how it is. Uh, and then container, this is used to wrap other widgets and specifically to style or decorate them. So you can think of this like a div um, in CS or in HTML, if you've done web development before. Uh, this is essentially just a blank uh, container widget that you can use to add other effects to. So if you wanna add shadows, right, rounded corners, stuff like that, uh, which we'll get into later, then this is how you would do it instead of using CSS. Uh, and then lastly, uh, I thought I'd include this center. The, the, I, I mean, do I need to say more? Like this is, this is the best widget ever. Like you don't, come on. Like everyone complains about centering stuff in CSS uh, and how that's like super hard. Yeah, this solves it. The hardest problem in all of software engineering and computer science just solved by one widget. Like how cool is that? <laughs> so these are some basic widgets. There's more widgets um, than this, obviously. Uh, I think if we go into, where's Chrome? Do I have Chrome open? Oh, Chrome, I'll just open a new window. Uh, I'm just gonna show you real quick some of the uh, widget library. Yeah, the widget library of, um... <clears throat> well, that's not what I wanted. Uh... Give me a sec, hold on. I don't know how to use Mac, apparently. But yeah, there's other widgets available. Um, we go into here, widgets catalog. Yeah, there, there's just a lot, um, basics, right? This is not. This is not even a complete list, but this is just like, I didn't even include all of these just because there's so much of them. Um, you know, column container, which we talked about before, icon, um, placeholders, if you're doing like mockups and stuff, image, you know, for storing images, right? Different buttons that are available, all kinds of things. Uh, and this is like pretty much a, a complete like catalog, I think, for most of the widgets that you'll be using. So this is a very useful um, place to be. So yeah, those are just some of the basic widgets. Um, so if we're writing our own widgets, um, so we have two types, right? Stateless widgets, stateful widgets. So stateless widgets lack state, uh, and that is they don't keep track of any changes to data. <coughs> this is used to uh, display static data like text, right? So this is just a very basic example is a container wrapped around text um, and it just displays hello world, right? Very simple. 
um, we're not keeping track of any values here, right? We're not incrementing a counter or, or changing a list of things or you know changing text or anything like that. We, we don't really care about that. Um, so a stateless widget is fine. <coughs> uh, stateful widgets are a little more complicated. Um, so this is actually one thing I kind of don't like as much uh, compared to React. Um, you know, React, there's like use state. It's just one line to set the state. Um, this is a little more complicated. So they're divided into two parts. You have the actual stateful widget, uh, which stores any static values. <clears throat> so it's similar to a state a stateless widget. But uh, another thing is that it includes this state object here. Um, which controls the layout and the actual state. Uh, and modifications to the state are done through the set state function. So we'll look at here in the next slide. This is a lot of code, right? <coughs> but this is um, the example app code here and how it keeps track of the counter state, right? The actual, um, yeah. Wouldn't you want to have the main class as stateful widgets? Um, you would think that's the intuitive um, like way to go, but this is not how they do it. Um, it's really strange. So here on the right side, we have the, the actual stateful widget, right? Um, and it has a title. This title is not really gonna change. We don't really care if it changes, um, right? This is just the title that we pass in. It's like, it's like a prop in React, right? Think of it like that. Uh, and then here we have the create state function. And this uh, essentially returns a my homepage state, which is the code on the uh, left side here. Uh, and in this state here, this is where we actually keep track of this. Uh, and I think the reason why we put it in the state object rather than the, the stateful widget is that ultimately state is what controls the UI, right? And when state changes, the UI has to change. So here, Whenever a counter gets changed by set state, it'll update this text widget down here. The second, uh, yeah, the, the second text widget. No, the third, yeah, the third text widget. Uh, you see this dollar sign underscore counter here. So anytime we update it here with set state, um, and set state is also very important because if we don't call set state and we just increment counter, uh, that doesn't let the um, widget tree know that it needs to update, right? It just up, it just increments the variable and it keeps going on, you know, and it doesn't know that it actually needs to change the UI. So that's why we have to call it, put everything in set state. This is technically an anonymous function that goes in here. So if we have multiple variables that we want to change, um, then we could just, you know, stick them all in here in this function, in this anonymous function. This is kind of like those arrow functions you see a lot in JavaScript. Um, that's basically the same thing, but there's no arrow because Dart is weird. Yeah. So hopefully this kind of makes sense. She has a lot of code, right? So the count is the state variable being tracked uh, and the underscore counter variable. Underscore just means that it's a private variable. That's just a convention. Um, and the set state function is used to update counter. And then finally, the text component renders the value of counter and updates it accordingly, right? And it updates it every time set state is called. Uh, and this is just a syntax thing. You use dollar sign to display the current value of a variable. <coughs> so we'll be building our first uh, widget, a simple stateless task widget. Uh, ultimately, we're gonna be building a to-do list app over the next, uh, you know, three workshops. Um, so this is just kind of getting started with one of the basic components, right? So it's gonna look like this. We're gonna have a essentially a title, a description, an icon here as a checkbox, just so we can, just so it looks kind of cool. Um, and then we'll surround it with this box shadow and rounded corners to make it look, you know, fancy and modern and all that nonsense. So yeah. Um, so deconstructing layout. So this is a pretty good exercise to do with a very basic widget, but you can do this with any layout. Um, and this is, an, this is a nice way of thinking and can apply to other areas like web development, for example. 
Uh, so we can just divide up the widget into the different parts to get a sense of what we need, right? So we can, okay, we, we see, okay, there's three main parts here, right? There's this checkbox, there's this title, and there's this, the, there's the description. Um, so basically we think of this, okay, this is basically just a row containing two widgets. So on the left side, we have an icon. Um, I mean, okay, this, it gets more complicated than this, but for now, let's just think of it like this, right? On the left side, we have an icon. And on the right side, we have a column, right? I talked about nesting rows and columns. This is an interesting way to think about it, right? We have a column here and the column contains two more widgets inside of it, right? The title and the description. So this is just a really simple, um, this is just a really simple way of breaking down um, a widget into its components uh, that you can actually write in Flutter. We'll worry about padding and spacing and all that later. So live coding, we'll be building the task widget from the ground up. <coughs> so let's see, where it is? I had, um, right, I had this code open. Let me just close this. Window management is hard. So yeah, I, I had um, this other project open that I was testing with. So let's see here. We run. So this just has very minor changes from the basic app. <coughs> So here, I'm just pulling up the solution code to make sure I don't mess this up. Uh, okay, so this is just like, I, I just changed this a little bit. Um, yeah, this contains a hello world text widget. That's it. Um, this list view, I don't know why this is here. Okay. Give me a sec here. So uh, let's start by creating the task widget. So you can technically stick all widgets into this main.dart file, um, but I think it's good practice to start separating things out to keep things organized. Uh, so I like to create a widgets folder uh, to store all of my little widgets that are not full pages. <coughs> uh, so this is a task widget, so we'll just call this task.dart. Um, and right away, this is using the Flutter snippets that I talked about earlier. Um, so we want task to be stateless, right? Because it's just displaying data. So you can just type stateless W and bam, everything is already done for you, right? It writes everything out. Uh, so we'll say, okay, this is a task widget. I think if you just use task, it conflicts with some other object or something in the Dart library. So it's really strange. Um, Looks like we got to import stuff. So yeah, this is a really convenient thing. Um, with VS Code, you can kind of just click on stuff. So right, so the child here. So what does this need? Well, we talked about, okay, it needs a row, right? So we'll make this a row widget. And a row contains, um, a named parameter, children, uh, that takes in an array or a list. Um, we can be more specific and say that this is a list of widgets. And then here uh, on the left, we have the icon. Uh, I believe it was a check. So we have icons.check. This is really interesting about Flutter is that you kind of have all these built-in libraries um, with you know preset uh, things like this. <laughs> so we don't need to go find our own check icon or whatever. Um, okay, so next up, uh, we talked about the column, right? Uh, and it has some children in it as well. 
So a text widget. Um, and we'll make this, let's see. Oh, right, okay. This needs two fields as well. So final, uh, final string. Final string description. We need a title and a description, right? And in order to do that, we need to set them here, uh, which is done with this shorthand. So these are named parameters. Um, we'll be passing these in similar to how we, we do it here. Anyway, text, uh, we wanted to display the title. Uh, let me just this. We wanted to display the title, but we also, let's see, also want to display, uh, we also want to make this bold, right? So we'll go to style. Uh, and we can pass in what's called a text style object uh, and specify not the background, but the font weight. Okay. Make this bold. And then finally, we'll specify the alignment. Um, we want this text to align to the left. So that's done with this text align here. Line that left. And everything seems to be working so far. Um, and then next up, we got to add the description. So here we have description. And um, this time this is not bold. So we're going to have, uh, we're just going to pass in the text align. Uh, property here. It's a line left. Yeah, live coding is hard. It's stressful. I swear I know what I'm doing. Oops. Okay. So now we want to actually see what our widget looks like. Um, so in this case, we'll just pass it in here. <coughs> we'll just stick a few of these in here just so we can see. Um, so here, I, I just changed it a little bit. I just added a text um, here instead of, so I, did, I removed the counter stuff um, and I just added it here. So in this main column widget, we have, let's see, what do we have? What, what did we call this? Oh, task widget, right? So if we click here and we press enter, you notice it automatically imports. This is another advantage of VS Code. Um, <coughs> If you're using Vim or something, uh, good luck. <laughs> anyway, um, so we have the task widget here and we wanna pass in a title, right? Title, so this is like the title of the task. Uh, let's see, finish live coding workshop. And then a description, live coding, then we'll do that. And notice it automatically formats, which is nice. Uh, and now we have this. Looks like the text align is, is this good? I guess it's fine. Uh, this looks really ugly right now, right? But don't worry, we'll, we'll fix it later. Uh, if we wanna test out having multiple of these, all right, we'll just do that. <coughs> Okay, so at this point, your widget should look something like this. Oh, right, okay, it looks like I forgot one thing. So columns, you can specify um, axis alignment. And this is kind of like, um, there's align items and there's justify content in CSS, right? In Flexbox, this is kind of similar to that. You have cross axis and main axis. Um, so cross axis is kind of like align items. Um, it tells you where your items are. In this case, we're going to say cross axis alignment dot start. So we move everything to the left, right? <coughs> All right. So this is what we should have. Um, it's kind of ugly, but it's a good start. 
Uh, so this just says, okay, put the column, put the widgets inside of the column widget to, uh, you know, see what they look like. And that's what we did here. So next up, padding. Um, so we're going to wrap the outer row widget with a padding widget. So rather than, um, this is different from CSS, right? You're not adding a padding property into a thing, right? You're essentially wrapping this in an entire padding widget. So uh, yeah, let's, let's do this here. So task, <coughs> we're going to, uh, let's see, row, uh, so one interesting thing about Flutter is, or VS Code is you can do stuff like this, where you could just click uh, wrap with padding and it just does it for you. Like, this is so nice. You don't have to type in and indent everything. Um, and like the nesting can get pretty bad, right? So this is, I mean, this is a really useful tool. Uh, what was the padding value we used? It's a 16, okay. Make this 16 and we'll save. And now this looks a little less bad. And uh, we're also going to add a sized box between the icon and the, and the column. I believe it was size 16 as well. Uh, it doesn't say here. I think it is sized box uh, with 16 or sized. So this is just like um, kind of a hack to just add some spacing here. Um, it might seem kind of jank, but this is actually like the way people do things in Flutter is you can just stick like a, a, an empty box of a certain width or height between things and add spacing wherever you need it. So now our thing looks a little better, right? It looks like this. <clears throat> Next up, we're gonna add the shadows and the corners here. So we'll wrap the whole thing in a container, which takes decoration as a parameter. And then we can use this to add shadows. So this is what it all looks like, uh, kind of ugly. Can the size box be responsive? Um, yeah, I believe so. I think you could pass in other things besides a static number into here. So it could be a variable or some other units. <laughs> uh, okay, so we already have a container here that came from the uh, snippet. So let's just add, I believe, here, decoration. Uh, and we'll be using this box decoration. Color, uh, so the color of this is white, so colors.white. We'll save this just so we see what it looks like. As you can see, the background is actually some kind of off-white. Um, so this is like making it kind of stand out more. Border radius, um, this is pretty similar. You know, this is just rounding the corner. Uh, and that's done with the border radius uh, object like this, border radius.all. This specifies it on all sides. Uh, and here we pass in radius dot circular. And as you can see, we have other ways of doing radius, which is interesting. If you want to round your things in different ways. Uh, but in this case, we'll just make it circular. And let's just make it eight. It's a nice round number. You can't really see, but um, trust me, it's, it's rounded. Uh, then we got to add the box shadow. Box shadow right here. So uh, let's see. So we have a box shadow object. Um, so I have some parameters I'm just going to copy because this is uh, kind of tedious to write. So this is the color that I'm using. It's just a slightly, uh, it's pretty much a, a, a slightly you know, transparent gray. We'll specify the offset. And the blurries. Of 
forgot a comma. Oh no, I had an extra parentheses. And then you've added them to padding instead of row. Um, no, no, they're all in container. So the container is just the, the whole thing that wraps around it. Yeah, it, it's really interesting how we style things just by adding widgets like around things by wrapping stuff rather than modifying current widgets. It's a different way of thinking um, with Flutter. So yeah, we have a little box. Right, that's good enough. Want a shadow for each? No. no. Um, we're doing just a shadow for the whole thing, right? This, I mean, the whole thing is one row. So we have, yeah. If we remove this other one, right? Like it'll still show up with the shadow. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so one more thing, we're gonna add padding between the tasks. So let's just add, um, another padding thing outside. Uh, and I don't know why I chose, the, I chose these numbers. I just thought these numbers look nice. Uh, so let's do that. So here, task. So this is, um, again, like another interesting thing. We want to pad it out. Well, let's just wrap it with a padding widget like this. Uh, and edge insets is how we set padding. Uh, and using only lets you specify padding for certain parts. So if we don't want padding for all four sides, right? Because that'll affect the spacing between them. So left, we'll just say 37. I think it was 37 and 22, those are the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> right, it's 37 and bottom. Yeah, now this looks a lot better. Um, and that's what we have here. So if you've been following along, you just written your first um, Flutter widgets. So notice how uh, doing things with padding decoration is very simple. Uh, simply just by adding, just by wrapping more widgets around and passing in additional parameters. So this is just how Flutter does things. Um, it's, it's just a different way of thinking compared to CSS where we, you know, put as styles onto existing elements and modify them directly. This we're wrapping stuff around widgets with more widgets. <coughs> so yeah, uh, next up we'll be uh, adding our own state just so we can kind of get an understanding of how state is supposed to work. So we'll keep track of all of our tasks in one giant state variable. This is not actually a good practice. Um, I'm doing this temporarily because um, we're not getting into backend and databases yet, right? Typically you, put, you store these in a database uh, somewhere else and sort of retrieve them asynchronously. Um, and you might have a state to track them, but you know, this is just a, a way to demonstrate state without getting into too difficult of concepts. So we're just going to build this really simple uh, app where we keep track of all our states in one giant variable. And each time we press a button, um, a new task will be added to the list. <coughs> so that sounds simple enough. Uh, and the new task, we can't edit the name um, because that involves editing text and all those fields. Uh, and that can get kind of complicated. Um, and I don't wanna delve into that in this workshop. That, that'll be for next workshop. So let's re-implement state into our app. So there's more live coding um, for those of you who are fans of that. Uh, let's see. <coughs> yeah, I'm, I'm actually not, um, I'm kind of cheating here. I'm just looking at the solution code to make sure I don't mess things up. Uh, okay. So here in this state, so remember everything that is stateful kind of goes in here. Yes, there's a GitHub repo. Um, I forgot to make an ACM URL for that. Uh, 
but I'll post the link in the actual chat right now. Uh, and I'll add it to the slides later. Right, there it is. Yeah, okay, so remember that everything that is stateful goes in the actual state object and not the stateful widget. A little bit counterintuitive, but it is what it is. Um, so we'll define a list of task widgets uh, called tasks or underscore tasks, and we'll make it an empty array. So then uh, we have this add task here. I changed the uh, increment counter to add task. Uh, and we have this set state here. So let me just write this out from scratch just so uh, you see what it means. You have the snippet here, but I'll, ex I'll explain. So set state is a function that takes in a function as an argument. Um, right, and this is how you write an, an anonymous function in Dart. So everything in here, we have like, you know, run this, right? Like, you know, run, run. Everything you type in here is going to run line by line like a function. So in this case, we want to uh, add a new task widget every time we press the button. So that's just going to add a task widget title. What's a good title for this? Uh, ketchup is delicious. Description uh, Pineapple Pete on pizza is not delicious. Okay, so this is a pretty simple example where we're just pushing this pre made task widget onto the thing. Uh, how could you, how could I say that? Well, I mean, I'm speaking the truth, I don't know. You can judge me all you want, but um, I will not change my opinion. Okay, so now um, let's see. Right, so the the floating action button here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, on press, we have the add tag. Looks like I already passed this in. So you have to specify the um, method here to pass in as the on press. So whenever this floating action button here gets pressed. It'll call add task, which calls set state, which adds a widget to the task. And because it called set state, it lets the tree know, okay, we added, we changed the state of the home page. So let's, you know, re-render everything that requires that to be changed. Uh, but where is it re where is it rendering that? Right? We don't have, we're not using tasks anywhere. So we need to actually add that in. So rather than having these static widgets. We're going to instead use the spread operator. Uh, so this is similar to JavaScript. I think it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, we use three dots to just denote the spread operator and then tasks. So what this essentially does is it just takes the stuff in here and appends it into this um, list or array. Technically, it's a list because it's not a fixed size. Um, and this is only doable because task widget, um, what is it? Task widget extends stateless widget, which extends widget. So by, um, you know, object oriented, like nesting, uh, what is it? Object oriented, like inheritance. I think that's the word. Um, by inheritance, right, we can do this because these are technically the same type. Right, a, a task widget is a widget, um, but normally that wouldn't be the case. Like if you were just appending stuff randomly. Uh, so yeah, this is just a spread operator. We add everything here. So I think we save. Uh, hopefully the app's not going to break. Okay, it didn't break. And if we press the plus button a bunch of times, it'll keep adding new tasks. Let's just you know press it a bunch of times. Oh no, it broke. Oh no, it broke. Okay, so that's that's kind of expected. Um, so let me just re-explain everything here. So here we declare a private state variable, underscore tasks. 
Uh, then we call set state to notify the widget that the layout needs to be updated, right? Again, this is really important. Uh, if we were to just add this, right, it wouldn't update the state, it wouldn't update the widget, and everything fails, and then you're crying um, at 4 a.m. trying to debug stuff. So don't do that, right? Set the state properly. <laughs> so further down, we're going to use the spread operator to append the list onto the column. Um, and this is again possible because of inheritance, because a, a task widget is a widget. Uh, and this just appends it into this array here. And yeah, there's just, um, I added this uh, little heading here just for fun. Uh, notice, I didn't explain this before, right? We have text. Um, this is not a named parameter, notice. It's just, we, we just pass in the string, right? We're not naming it, uh, but everything else is. Text align, we specify, okay, we're gonna center this. And the style, we're gonna make this a slightly bigger font. So font size is another property we could set. Uh, and then I added some spacing here in between with a sized box of height 24. <coughs> so pretty simple. Uh, but notice how we have this overflow problem, right? We have some overflow here. So the column widget actually cannot contain all the task widgets because the column widget is kind of bounded by the screen, right? We need a different widget for that. Uh, and that's called list view. Uh, so I had that earlier, I forgot to remove it because I was testing stuff earlier, but yeah. So the list view is kind of like, think of it like a scroll view in React Native. Um, there's no analog for web on this because in web everything scrolls. Um, but yeah, this thing just lets you scroll so we're going to go into, let's see here, instead of column, we're just going to replace this with list view. And now, nice, we can add a bunch of widgets and it could scroll. So yeah, this is pretty much our app so far. So yeah, we just need to change the column widget into a list view widget. Uh, and it just so happens that everything works. Too much catch up. Yeah. I agree. Um, there's a lot of catch up. But the, the pineapple on pizza comment though, uh, that's very, that's needed. We need to, we need to educate the world <clears throat> on what foods go with what. So demo, we're gonna make sure everything works. Again, it does work, I'm pretty sure, right? We can click to add more. You can notice it updates live even. Um, again, we could, uh, I'm gonna show you here the hot reload feature is really nice. Right, anything you change is not gonna affect the state. Uh, let's see, icon, icons dot, other icons are there. AC unit, what is that? Yeah, so this is just a benefit of Flutter. So yeah, everything works. Uh, and that's kind of our basic app that we built. So yeah, that's it for this workshop. Um, it was kind of short. Uh, I wanted to keep it short because <clears throat> I'm still kind of recovering from uh, illness, so yeah. Uh, yeah, we built a solid foundation for a to-do list app using only basic widgets and state. So it's not very functional at the moment, but we'll be building more on top of this, right? Next time uh, we'll be diving into more advanced concepts. So next workshop is gonna be much longer than this, um, including navigation between screens and creating widgets programmatically with text fields, as well as gestures and other advanced UI stuff. Uh, so next workshop is really the interesting one for a really deep dive into the different features of Flutter. Yeah. So additional resources. Um, if you want to learn more, you want to sort of brush up on the basics and also maybe get ahead for the next workshop, uh, I recommend these resources. So the Flutter docs here, the official Flutter docs, this is how I learn Flutter. Um, I'm kind of weird in that I like to read documentation. So um, this helped me a lot in sort of getting the basics down. 
Uh, it's great for both new developers starting out if you know nothing about Flutter um, and you want to sort of uh, get, you know, get more into that or you're an experienced developer and you want to sort of take your development to the next level and dive into advanced concepts, right? This is a great resource. Uh, and also Dart Crash Course here, um, this is a language tour. If you're familiar with Java and C++, you should be pretty good with Dart for the most part. <coughs> but you might need to brush up on some of the basics, right? So this is a great resource for that. So yeah, thank you everyone for coming to the workshop. Um, yeah, hope to see y'all next week. <laughs>